What's up guys? In this video, I wanted to talk about my closed loop system. Here it is, four points on each corner of the tank and uh, Vectra L2, 12 inches below the water line in the back. This is the first time in two years that I've taken down the closed loop. So I wanted to document this, show you how I put it together and took it out and cleaned it. I'm actually blowing air into the inlet just so I could see the flow in the tank. This is at 85% and you could see tank is seven foot long and it has no problems traveling across. Um, it goes all the way to the back too, so there's no dead spots in the system. And the sea swirls and the adductors really maximize the flow in my system. A lot of people avoid doing a closed loop because of plumbing jobs such as this one. And this one, this tank has about eight holes in the back and that's too many failure points. I have a one and a half inch hole in the back for the inlet and four holes in the Euro brace. I also built the canopy around the closed loop. So it's really easy for me to access the front sides of the tank. I used to run this on constant power, different intensities throughout the day and nighttime I would have it at 50%, but now I just run 85% on reef press. 85% um, on constant is really too powerful and the corals just don't like it. This way I get a good burst, then it slows down, almost goes too slow. But you can see, look at the flow I'm getting at the back. There are many benefits to a closed loop. The main one is I only lost about 30% power, I would say on my, my pump after two years. My MP60s lose their intensity about 30% within a month. Another reason why I did the closed loop, I didn't want to have to use more than two MP60s in my system. If I didn't have the closed loop, I would need at least four, maybe five or six propeller pumps. And that's just way too many outlets for me and way too many pumps to clean. You know, if I'm having a tank, anything under 150, I wouldn't do a closed loop. I think two MP40s would be fine and a sea swirl on a return would be more than enough flow. But at that point where I have to add a third pump, I would strongly suggest planning in a closed loop. It doesn't have to be uh, complicated like the pitches I shared earlier, and it could be energy efficient as well. I came up with this solution years ago when I was planning to do a peninsula, and I didn't want to have any bulky power heads at the far end of the aquarium. Um, when I moved into this house, I didn't have enough space for a peninsula, but I still wanted to add um, a closed loop and get flow in the front of the reef. When I planned this, I wasn't sure how much flow I was going to get on a 7 foot long tank. And this pump is about 31, 3100 gallons per hour of flow. And I only have about 18 inches of head pressure, so when I looked at the graph, I think I get about 2800 at 100%. I was going to use those random flow generators. I actually had uh, four of them. And I just feel like they don't give the same amount of flow compared to those bulky adductors that I use. The random flow generators, I actually had them on my quarantine tank at one point. And I noticed once I removed them, I was getting a lot more flow from my return pump. I know that because I run a bean animal overflow, so I had to increase the, the valve going into the sump. Here's all my components from my closed loop. I made it so I could easily take it apart and clean it. So the benefit to having my inlet from my closed loop 12 inches below the surface, I could easily replace any components without having to remove most of the water. I'm just um, siphoning out water right now. It's going directly into the sump. And then I'm gonna expose the inlet so that way I could remove everything. I do have a valve there, but there will still be some water left in the pump. And I didn't wanna take a chance and get a puddle back there. So I decided to remove about 80 gallons. I just have it going directly into the sump and that way, uh, I don't have any surprises. I do have four outlets down there. And this, since this is the first time removing it, I didn't want to take no chances. 
Well, here it is. This is how I um, installed my pump. It's just a piece of two by four and some plywood. And I, um, I drilled the Vectra onto it. Here I am in the basement. I really need to get some pipe cleaners or something. But for now, I just uh, tied a toothbrush onto a stick. And uh, this is how I did it. I mean, there was a lot of slime built up in there. So I did uh, run it with some water in the basement. So I got most of the slime off of it. Just some calcium deposits and stuff, but it wasn't too much. Most of it was just just slime build up. So this is me cleaning the Vectra. Considering it hasn't been cleaned in over two years, it wasn't as bad as I expected. Those are some calcium, some of those um, white calcium based uh, inverts growing in there, but nothing, nothing out of control. So I just use a vinegar, maybe 30 minutes. I put it in vinegar and then I uh, reassembled it. All right, guys, here's the final product. I laid it out here for you guys to see. Very, very simple to reassemble, but I will say it was a pain in the butt to put together. This was the hardest plumbing job I ever had to do because it had to be perfect. Now here's my floating stand. I don't get no vibrations with this, which was a big surprise. Everything's hard plumb and it's out the way. I know a lot of people consider this uh, OG technology, the sea swirls, but honestly, they're the best things I've ever had in my reef tank. I just wish they were a little bit more affordable, but I think they're worth the money. They last for a long time. They only use five watts of uh, electricity. And because I'm using these, I'm getting flow in every nook and cranny of the fish tank. In the center, in the back, nothing settles. There's always, con there's always detritus, poop, food, everything's always suspended. And uh, it usually ends up in the overflow or the rock work. All right, finally got the pump ready to go. Moment of truth. And this is the first time having to do this with water in it. So, so notice how I go underneath the pipe work. I mean, this was something that I thought of because um, it's kind of hard to reach in this area. All right, tighten the unions for the Vectra. One thing I like about the Vectra, it comes with two unions. Now I'm installing the left side and the right side. I have a shelf all the way on the right side. That way I don't need somebody else to help me hold it. Finally, last piece. I have about eight unions on this and I was really excited about making this video that I forgot to tighten the last union. Man, that sucked. Even getting a few gallons on the floor is, is like big deal. It went all over the wood floors, all over the back wall, on some outlets. And I should have immediately turned off the pump, but I think I went into a little bit of a shock. I didn't know what was going on. I thought there's probably a small leak, but the, the union all the way to the right was completely open and water was just going out pretty, pretty fast. But here I am cleaning it up. Lesson learned. This is where all the water went. I cleaned it up, but it's still a little bit wet on the floor. Well, if you made it this far, I want to say thank you. Hope you learned something. And here are some shots of the flow because long term, the maintenance is much more simpler than having to pull out multiple power heads. My rule is I'm not going to maintain more than two pumps in any size fish tank.
so I could get a good year plus without having to pull it apart. That's a win-win for me. Alright guys, have a good one. Bye.